You also touched on DMSA a little bit. Can you, along the same lines, explain what that is and why, like in your case, it wasn't as effective and how do people know? Right. Uh, so your, your two main, there's, there's three main chelators out there, DMSA, DMPS, and EDTA. EDTA is more specific for lead, so we're just going to leave that in the lead world. Uh, DMSA and DMPS are very good for mercury, but they gather a number of other metals as well. Now, you take those orally or bar IV, they'll go into systemic circulation, and they will bind mercury that's in the blood and in the lymph, and they will turn it into a water-soluble complex that will be filtered out by the kidneys and go out in the urine. Now, they're, these were developed in industrial areas originally for highly, highly exposed, highly toxic people. For instance, DMPS was developed in Russia for certain industries that used mercury and other metals heavily. Mm. And their workers, who were normally healthy, robust guys, were exposed to gargantuan levels. I mean, these are well above, you know, 10 times what any of us are exposed to, even at the high end. Mm. And uh, sometimes 100 times. And so they had to drain those levels down before acute toxicity set in. Most of what we talk about with dealing with people in a natural health setting is chronic toxicity. This is acute toxicity. So they'd take these, they'd drain a bunch of the metal out through their urine, and it would bring those levels down to where they're not suffering acute toxicity anymore. So these could be a little bit aggressive for some of these chronically ill people, and you give them, I mean, there's all these stories about people, they take the chelator for the challenge test, and they get sicker. One of the reasons they get sicker, well, there's two. One is just moving metal too quickly and they're, they've become very sensitive to the metal and it's catalyzing a lot of inflammatory reactions. Once you have this inflammatory reaction where you feel really bad from the detoxification, remember I said inflammation shuts the system mm -hmm. down. So then you lock everything in and then you have what's called redistribution where it, eventually your liver's pulling the chelator out and the metals get stuck somewhere else. So you're pulling them from one place, leaving them somewhere else. Uh, so inflammatory processes can lock this all up or a kidney that's not able to filter these metals out. So now in the testing that we do without using any chelators, we can compare uh, a form of mercury called inorganic mercury in your blood to inorganic mercury in your urine. If the kidneys are filtering okay, they'll be at a certain ratio and as the blood goes up, the urine will go up linearly with it and those people can probably handle some of these water-soluble chelators. But when you have people where the blood levels are rising, but the urine is not rising with it, that was uh, in 1973, Hal Huggins called that retention toxicity. He didn't have the sophisticated equipment that I have, but he could do some urinary mercury measurements. And he could look in your mouth and he sees, you got 17 amalgams and you got 0.2 ppb mercury in your urine, this doesn't add up. And he'd say those guys have retention toxicity because he knows these people were sick. So the mercury's not getting out through the kidney. So now we're going to go in and put a bunch of chelators and throw more metal through those kidneys? I know a lot of people who've, who've suffered some degree of uh, kidney damage from doing mm. that. And so now, based on the testing I do, I think I, think I can predict who's going to have the hard time uh, with those chelators, and I was one of them. I just didn't know it at the time, mm -hmm. but I have the measurements now to say, okay, I was a guy who shouldn't be taking it because I took more and more DMSA, and I'm watching the urine levels kind of come up, but not like, whoom, like mm -hmm. they're supposed to. And so I just kept taking more. Well, I must not be taking enough. You know, I'm taking a gram and a half a day, you know, and I'm just like, <laughs> I, was, I was just fading, fading right out.